Grayson Rodriguez comes into the 2024 season as one of the most exciting young pitchers in baseball. His energy on the mound is loud and bold and extremely exciting to watch. He entered the 2023 season as one of the highest ranked prospects in all of baseball and the highest ranked pitching prospect in all of baseball. His overall rookie season was okay. His first half was marred by hard contact issues and some walk issues against both lefties and righties, but a really, really strong second half catapulted him to a solid rookie season. I'm going to talk about the changes he made in the second half and why I think he can be a dark horse Cy Young candidate. So like I said, Grayson Rodriguez had a rough first half of the season. Over his first 45 innings, he had an ERA over 7 and a fifth nearing 6. The results were horrendous despite some underlying numbers that suggested he was dealing with some bad luck. He had the highest home run per fly ball rate in baseball at 28%, meaning 28% of the fly balls he gave up turned into home runs. XFIP, which assumes league average home run per fly ball rate, gave him a very good 3.92 XFIP. He allowed a 12.7% barrel rate in the first half, which was the fourth worst in all of baseball. The other big issue we had was throwing strikes against both lefties and righties, but specifically to lefties. He had a 13.6% walk rate against lefties in the first half, which is basically a reliever-like number. The cause of that really high walk rate was due to a lack of fastball command, and his signature changeup not being the same plus pitch it was in the minor leagues. So Grayson Rodriguez was sent down to the minor leagues in July, and he made a pretty big adjustment with his release point. In the first video here, you can see his release point in the first half was much more over the top, with a vertical release point at about six feet. If we use the same camera angle from Camden Yards, we can see that his release point in the second half was closer to third base by 0.3 feet, which may not seem like a lot, but that is a pretty significant change. The change in his mechanics did absolute wonders for his fastball. Among pitchers that were qualified, he had the biggest drop in fastball barrel rate between the first half and the second half, ahead of Spencer Strider and Michael Kopech. More generally, the fastball adjustment helped Rodriguez command the pitch better. Prior to his demotion, the fastball had a tendency to miss up in the zone to both lefties and righties, which is fine for generating whiffs on swings, which he did a lot in the first half. 29% whiff rate was in the 83rd percentile, but not as good for generating swings themselves, where he saw a 49% swing rate, 49th percentile. In what is no doubt a causation of lowering his release point, Grayson Rodriguez's fastball location subsequently began to drop in the second half. He filled up the strike zone much more in the second half, and these visuals here are from Pitcher List. Shout out to Kyle Bland for probably my new favorite pitch location tool. These visualizations are awesome. Once again, showing the difference between the two halves in the first half, a lot up in the zone to lefties and righties and then compare that to the second half here, really hammering that outside corner to lefties and a lot more fastballs in the zone against righties. So we've seen the visualizations, but it's also important to put context to these numbers. So the zone rate jumped to the 80th percentile, the fastball swing rate also jumped to the 80th percentile, and then waste percentage, which is the amount of times he throws a pitch in the waste area of the strike zone. Those are uh, stat cast terms. Went from 33rd percentile all the way to the 74th, meaning he threw fastballs in the waste area much less often in the second half. The batted ball outcomes on his fastball also really improved across the board with decreases in exit velocity and fly balls. The slight move in release point that became closer to right-handed hitters gave them a more uncomfortable look. The ground ball rate on his fastball nearly doubled in the second half, with the majority of those gains coming against right-handed hitters. His 52% ground ball rate in the second half was a massive leap forward compared to the 38% ground ball rate in the first half. 
So we've already talked about how Rodriguez improved his command against lefties and the batted ball quality against righties. But how did he improve the batted ball quality against lefties in the second half? Coming into the season, his changeup was his most popular pitch, according to analysts. It got a 70-70 grade from fan graphs, but in the first half, it was league average in terms of whiff rate, chase rate, and the ground ball rate was actually well below league average for changeups. I think you can get a good idea of why his changeup was bad in the first half if you look at a pitch plot. Here's his pitch plot in the first half. You can see how the changeup is kind of scattered. Some of them are very close to the fastball. And it looks like there's just a lack of feel for the pitch in the first half. When you compare that to the second half, the changeup is much more compact. It doesn't overlap with the changeup and has its own distinct area of the pitch plot, which to me indicates he had increased feel for the pitch and was able to command it better. Against left-handed hitters in the second half of the season, his changeup had a 72% ground ball rate, which is the third highest among qualified pitchers. In the second half, his changeup velocity went up, but the induced vertical break on the pitch went down, or there was more drop. And that's a very uncommon thing to happen. Usually when a pitch is thrown harder, it will have less movement. So for a slider, if it's harder, it'll have less sweep to it. It'll look a little bit more like a cutter or a gyro slider. But same thing for changeups. When the changeup is thrown harder, it will probably drop less. But Rodriguez, with this adjustment, with his arm angle, was able to add drop to the changeup while still maintaining the same velocity. In fact, increase it a little bit. Grayson Rodriguez has some of the best stuff in all of baseball. He has four pitches above a 120 stuff plus, and it's highlighted off by a curveball that he didn't throw much last year, but I'm curious to see if he adds it into his repertoire a bit more in 2024. His 126 stuff plus overall is one of the highest in baseball among starters, and I'm very curious to see what he does to improve his game coming into this season. He's added a two-seam fastball in spring training, which is interesting because that's usually an option to get right-handed hitters out or same-handed hitters, but he's already pretty great against righties, so I'm curious to see how he adds that into his repertoire. Again, the ground ball rate in the second half was already pretty good against righties, 52%, but I don't want him to lose too many swings and misses by adding in the two-seam fastball. Thanks so much for watching everyone. If you wanna let me know your thoughts on the video, you can reach out to me on Twitter. Uh, my Twitter is at Levy underscore Cameron. And I'm gonna be doing a lot of videos like this over the course of the season. I'm very excited to get on YouTube and I'm excited to just see what comes of this. Also, I wanna give a shout out to Lance Rosdowski. If you're watching this video, you've probably seen a lot of the work that Lance does on YouTube. Um, I met him at the winter meetings I had been following him for a while on Twitter and watching his videos. Not only is he a very good analyst and very good at Premiere Pro, but he's a really great guy and he gave me a lot of tips throughout this process. And I'm very grateful that Lance is willing to talk to me about how to go about this. So Lance, thank you so much, man. I really appreciate it. Um, I'll be linking Lance's page in the description. And yeah, thank you all so much for watching.